Hey guys, Godzilla Freak here, and welcome to my review of episode 102 of Dragon Ball Super. The power of love explodes. Universe 2's Little Witch Warriors. Did I actually remember? Oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. I actually got that right. I got the title right. That's surprising. And if you thought Khalifa and Kale were bad with like the you know going straight to super saiyan 2 well universe 2 decided to take that to a whole new level and made a straight up terrible episode when it comes to plot and it recycled a lot of animation this episode as well but it did do a decent amount so i would rate this like a five where most of dragon ball super would be like a seven so this is a poor episode so at the very beginning of the episode Zeno goes through the god pad and shows off all the warriors who are left in the tournament of power and you actually see two Namekians from Dragon Ball um, Dragon Ball 6 yeah no universe 6 which is really weird and we don't know who these two Namekians are but like on episode 96 or 97 I don't remember I think it was Dragon um, Dragon Ball 6. Yes, Dragon Ball 6 only had 8 warriors along with Dragon Ball 4. Not Universe 6 and 4. No, Dragon Ball 6 and 4. And they only have 8 warriors. But apparently there were hidden warriors in Universe 6. So I really want to see about those Namekians. And this was developed time, but it does actually give us an idea of how many people are left in the dra the Dragon Ball of Power. Yes, everything is Dragon Ball now. It's not universes or tournaments. It's just Dragon Ball. And, yeah, that's that's good, I guess. And right after that, you get... Oh, yeah, you get Rebrianne, well, Brienne at this point, and her two companions are at the top of a giant, like, pile of rubble. And they're like, Oh, everybody, get ready for Universe 2! And then the sub the God of Destruction and the Kaioshin are there. It's like, oh yeah, um, Universe 2 is really strong. They have love and stuff, right? And all the other Universe 2 members are cheering on. And it's like, what? They're transform. And it's like, we're going to transform. Everyone's like, they're transforming. So they start this tr transformation. It's like, formation. And they have this whole Sailor Moon kind of freaking transformation montage going and then toward the end of that montage no wait before that he i need to mention this helles the god of destruction from universe 2 is really really annoying she does this thing with her arm where she brings it down and they recycle this animation tons of times in the episode over and over again where they could do new animation but they just recycle the animation so they do the transformation and then 17 blast them and then goku's like what did, did you hear they were transforming it's like they were wide open, so I attacked. But it's like, Tobo just comes in. It's like, no, you can't do that. That's not fair. You gotta let them transform. That's the law of Dragon Ball and anime. You gotta fight them when they're in their strongest state. And then they have more recycled. They legit have to do the whole transformation sequence again with the formation thing. Sailor Moon transformation all over again to fill up more space. And then the actual transformation actually happens. And Cri and it's like, oh yeah, so much love. Their love is a lot. They're beautiful with the hell is animation. And Krill's like, they were way cuter before they transform. Because now they just look weird. They're not even beautiful anymore. And it's like, that doesn't really lead to anything. And then ad break. They took up half the episode by recycling animation and doing the god path. That's impressive, Toei. Good job, man. Good on you. And then there's um a love gas attack. So Ri Rian starts up. She does this love attack. And it only works on fodder. 
or maybe like really love enthused people, I guess. I don't know. And they will be like, oh yes. But then Goku's like, hmm, this is weird. And Frieza's like, because you know Frieza's the anti of good things, so it's like, what a foul odor. Uh. And everyone's like Goo Goo Gaga and stuff, all the fodder. And then Jiren shows up, blasts Rebria, and she dodges it or something. And all of the, all of the love gas just instantly dissipates. That makes zero sense whatsoever. But whatever, it happens. All the love gas just dissipates out of the area, so we get a clear view again. And then Master Roshi, who we were scared that would get caught by the love gas he's actually 100 percent completely unaffected by this because of his training with poa it really paid off here that was great and after and gohan's like okay yeah there's like no space here there's walls everywhere this isn't really working out well this was before um jirim blasts away all the love gas so that's there it's hard to see so it's like okay we're just gonna split up for now there's less fighters i think we, we're free to do that now and after that we have vegeta versus rebriand we get the scene from the intro where vegeta super saiyan and fighting rebriand da, 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 da. rebriand does that key blast right from the intro and then Vegeta just like dodges it. She gets on the ground, and there's, a, and then, um, there's a lot of things with maidens, at least with Rebrian. It's like the maidens' power, the maidens' love, the maidens' attack, the maidens' fireball, which is the next attack that she does right here, right here. She does the, she like spins a ton of times in circles, and it's, it looks really ugly, right? And then she like goes on the ground and she charges at vegeta vegeta tries to punch it but then this face describes the episode right here it's like yeah no and she's like and he jumps up and it's like that face was so gross i had to instinctively dodge it that was that was cool and it actually knocks out a member of Universe 10 in the background who was supposed to be fighting Piccolo. And remember that Piccolo scene from the preview? Yeah, that's because he, sh the guy got knocked off by Rebrian. And he ends up on the podium and Ramon just bumps him with his stick. It's like, time for punishment! And then there's a weird person, like a weird universe 2 person it was one of rebrian's companions one of those two and he is like do 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 with two hands a goku is like uh, the more she attacks the stronger be she becomes with goku in base form and she seems to be damaging goku but again it it doesn't really lead to anything just like with vegeta versus rebrian nothing really happens from that and then you get to the main course of the episode which is 17 versus this like wild Beast type of a character after the transform state. It was the other companion to Rebriam beside the guy that the girl, I guess, that just fought Goku. And she's supposed to be like a wild beast, like fast, she's agile, she's wild. That's the whole thing they're going with. It, it's not that much, she's more like a, just like a normal character in Dragon Ball, considering it's a show about fighting, but she does do, um, like, biting. She she was fighting Seventeen, she charged her with her claw, him, okay, she charged Seventeen with her claws, and then he, she bit into Seventeen's arm, and Seventeen didn't even take any damage from that, just shrugged her off, right? That happens. And then she's attacking 17. The ton. She's attacking 17. And it's like, oh yes, they, they have lots of stamina. Seven, eight, Hellas does the thing again. They have so much stamina. She won't run out. She's a wild animal. And then, uh, and then it's like, huh, are you talking about stamina to an android? Because last time I checked, androids literally have infinite stamina. And she's coming from a lot of directions. Huh. What does Seventeen have other than, I don't know, a spherical barrier that can block attacks from any direction? 
Whoa! We, we definitely didn't know about that. 17 puts up the barrier. She just gets blocked. It's like, what is this? You're my prey. You're nothing more than my prey. How are you doing this? 17 is just like, <laughs> God damn it. That's a stupid attack, whatever he says, right? And apparently now can 17 can completely control her barrier and do whatever she wants with it. Because she proceeds to, like, electrocute the barrier she makes the barrier electric and this the universe tubers are just like oh she's shocked from the electricity and then she's he's somehow able to spin the barrier at full speed she he he spins it like a ton of times he just keeps spinning it and then he throws the girl from universe 2 Toward the outer side of the ring. And everyone's like, oh yeah, that's gonna be a ring off for sure, ring off for sure. And you know, that obviously that doesn't happen. It's epic foreshadowing, am I right? And she is actually saved by another person from Universe 2 that can fly, that just grabs her. And there's a scene where it's like, oh, love, 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 because it's the universe of love, Universe 2. She throws um, the cat lady the wild one, back at 17, and you charge at 17, 17 is thrusted into a wall, right, and it breaks through Kachi Kachin, apparently everyone's Kachi Kachin now, level now, this makes no sense, right, boom, right through the wall, and then it's like, oh, is 17 in trouble, 18 shows up, and then you see 17's face, it's just like, oh, okay, they reminded me of the wild animals from my reserve time to go serious she has he has why do i keep calling 17 a she he has a completely bland expression throughout this whole thing he she, he just has a bland expression no expression on the face because 17 is super stoic and then he goes in at the flying ones, like, yeah, the flying ones are threat, man. They, they, they're the ones that are causing trouble. So he just curve stomps her at a million different directions. And then he just kicks her. And instead of kicking her out, he aims it so it kicks her into the her state, into her um, out zone with the with the Kaioshin and the God of Destruction. Oh yeah, I have to mention, though the God of Destruction Hellas of Universe 2 was annoying with that recycled animation, but the Kaioshin was pretty cool. She, he has some good reactions, like this. So after that, oh, <laughs> the wild one is ready, is reacts poorly to this, right? She's like, no, you are my prey. You just knocked out one of my teammates and disturbed our transformation. Draw! He, he, she, she attacks 17, and then 17 is like, oh, yeah. And Rebrianne shows up in this mess. It's like, oh, yeah, would well, you want some help? And she, the, the wild one's like, no, he's my prey. It's like, okay, off to your own devices and hunt your own prey. And there's like a fi mini fight scene with 17 and the wild one. They're like attacking, they're exchanging blows, but 17's winning. There was a scene where he kneed her in the face, right? And then he does like a key blast and misses. And he's like, she, the, the wild one's like, yo, this is all gonna hit me, you completely miss. And 17 flies up to this incandescent light bulb that we fail to notice this entire time, which is at the top of the stadium, because the world of Void is not like the room of spirit in time, where it's like lit the entire time. Instead, it's dark, it's a void, right? So they have this giant light bulb that lights up the entire arena. And a Apparently, it's not like a cloud. You can actually land on it. So, 17 does that. The first time I watched the episode, I thought he j made that with his energy. But no, he jumps onto it. It was already there from the beginning. If you look at the beginning of the episode. And he does this massive, super cool key blast. Just boom! The size of the entire arena just blasts the universe 2 character out of existence well not really just out of the ring but yeah she complete he completely destroys her gets wrecked 
And at the end of the episode, Rhea Brienne's mad. It's like, you knocked out our fighters and you stopped their transformation? This will not be allowed to go any further. I will take care of you. And that ends the episode right then and there. Overall, you know, between the recycled animation and everything, this was a bad episode. But it did feature 17 a lot, which was cool. I liked how they featured him as a really prominent character in this episode. That was really good. But aside from that, you know... A lot of the episode wasn't good. There was a lot of extraneous filler. But there were some good scenes. So this wasn't the worst episode. This wasn't like early Super where they had the completely unviewable animation. But compared to like the last episode, it's not anywhere near as good. So yeah, that's going to be all for today, guys. Take care, y'all. Goodbye.